Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. My name is Nemo Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit, and joining me every week is my brother, Pedro. What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro Rose, Craig of Tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right. This is a show where I try to look over to the, <laughs> try to look behind this camera. Uh, this is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. How are you folks doing? I can't see what shot I'm supposed to switch. <laughs> Today's coupon code is Portal View. If you want to pick up anything in the Adafruit shop, uh, please use coupon code Portal View. This just in super breaking news. Are you guys ready for this? This probably won't work, but it did. Uh, 24 left in stock. The Pi Portal is in stock right now. It just went up live. There is 18 left in stock. Uh, a couple minutes ago, it was 24. Now it's 18. So if, you, if you'd like to uh, pick up one, you can get 10% off that using our coupon code. Portal view. Wow, that was a, 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 a nice looking glitch there. That was cool. Hello, everyone in the chat room. We are live streaming right now. We do this show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. We have some freebie deals going on. If you go to adafruit.com slash free, you can see all the awesome, lovely goodies that we are now giving away. Um, there's different tiers and such. So check out adafruit.com slash free for all the details. How are we sounding, Pedro? Is everything okay with sound? <laughs> we don't know. No, okay, cool. Well, hello, everybody in the chat room. We are hanging out in lots of different chat rooms. Shout out to all the folks in the Discord chat room. If you'd like to join us there, we're hanging out there right now. Discord.gg slash Adafruit is the invite, and we have several chat rooms and such. We're hanging out in the live broadcast. That's a quick shout out to everybody in the chat room over on the YouTube chats. We've got Shane, Scott, Charles, Alex, X, Act, Matable, Stuff, Kirby. In Discord over here, we got uh, Dan and Dan Mitchell. Apple. Hello. Hello. Charles Hello. Discord. Don't forget the Facebooks. We're hanging out there. Howdy, folks. Luis, what's up? Can't hear Pedro's mic. Yeah, my mic is turned on. Yeah. Hmm. There's no mute on it. Oh, how about that? Oh, there was mute on it? <laughs> All right. Live streams are fun and challenging. Anyway. Hello, thank you for joining us. Well, let's go ahead and keep uh, rocking, <laughs> walking through the show. Um, if anyone is in New York City and wants to pick up some parts on the same day of their, on, of their order, you can get delivered. Certain zip codes apply in New York City. Check out the website for more details. We're just chatting about Discord. We have a weekly Circuit Python meeting that happens on Discord. It happens every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. There's a chance for the community members to hang out and say, how are they doing? Um, and uh, lots of status updates and things of that nature. Speaking of CircuitPython, I'd love to, with great pleasure, uh, announce a new website called circuitpython.org. You can check it out now. We will talk about it in the Shop Talk segment. But for now, it's just a little bit of announcement, circuitpython.org. Easiest way to get CircuitPython on your hardware. When it comes to daily newsletters, we have a good uh, categories of them. Go to adafruitdaily.com and see all the different categories that we have, including 3D printing, CircuitPython, biohacking, and much, much more. Newsletter happens once a week, this is a product focused one. It's the new, new newsletter. Check out adafruit.com slash newsletter for that. All right. We talked about Discord, and now we're going to talk about the Adafruit jobs form. So go to jobs at adafruit.com to see all the lovely um, new postings, testing, testing. classifieds that we have available right now. Shout out to all the folks who are making their maker profiles and all the awesome maker companies that are seeking and posting listings there for folks. So it's our free, uh, it's a free service. So check it out if you are interested in getting some gigs or finding some maker skills. There we go. Hanging out in the chat room. We're gonna, uh, yeah, Pedro, speak into the mic, please. Good. We're good. 
<clears throat> just heard playback. Sorry it takes like a minute for the audio to catch up to the video on yeah, the stream. Exactly. But it should be good by now. Sweet. This is why I was like, it's good. We Nobody's complaining. It's when you know your audio is not working. <laughs> right? Or none of your thumbnails are loading. <laughs> I was like, what's going on here? Sweet. Well, um, I don't have any other uh, housekeeping items. I think that's it. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's project video. Yes. Hopefully my audio is still going through. Go ahead. Yep, you're good. Yeah, you're good. I All can right. see green levels over there. This week we talked about it for about three weeks as we usually do when we're working on projects. This is the Digital View Master powered by very awesome Pi Portal. So digital, meaning that all the images can be stored either on the SD card, which you have access to here, or you can have it be an internet connected device. We can just pull uh, images from a uh, center somewhere. See my mom there. So when you uh, crank down on it, it activates the switch. There's two little switches on side and we'll look at it in the learn guide. When those two make contact, it triggers the sort of Python code inside there to advance the slide. Yeah, this is using the slideshow library for CircuitPython. It allows you to create uh, really simple, clean slideshows with bitmap images. Yeah. So you get this nice fade. The, uh, uh, the triggering mechanism is, is on. Instead of a release, it's on, so it happens instantly as soon as those two contact switches touch. Yeah. You get yourself, hey, there's me. <laughs> and the other side is Gavin, I think. Yeah. You can kind of see the compression spring that we're using right there. Yeah. And we'll take a look at the way that the build is in a little bit. So uh, this is- Continue a, to talk about like, yeah. the layout. You have access to two stomach connectors. Uh, one's being used for power. The other is for the switch that's activating the, uh, the advancing of the photo. You yeah. have access to your reset button. Uh, you have a programming port that you can solder on there. Uh, there's a power boost 5000C, 1000 or 1000C that's uh, charging, that can charge the battery and provide power to the pipe portal. So you have access to that little guy there. If you ever want to use your USB power, you have access to that as well in the design, or you could just cover that up in the source files for that. And of course, access to your on and off button and some googly eyes and <laughs> just give it a bit of character. Everything is nicely exposed, so if it does get a little warm, you will have nice ventilation for that. You have some nice clearance on all the components in the back there. You need a couple of screws to uh, hook all of this up together, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. You can add lenses on there, so you will be able to make this shorter if you want to have like a little pillar in the middle and format your images so they are stereoscopic. So you can do that on your own. There are uh, sites on the net where you can get the uh, lenses for this to uh, you know, have a little bit more wide angle view so you don't have to have the frame so long. Yeah, if you have like a Google Cardboard or one of the knockoffs, those lenses should work fine with them. Yeah, I actually was designing it for that, but at the end, I really liked how you didn't need that additional hardware to uh, have this work. This could be like just like a portable, you know, uh, viewer. You could have a quarter 20 on the bottom here, maybe turn this into a virtual Game Boy. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So super cool for having either an internet connected slideshow that you can point to or have your own inside of a uh, SD card. Excellent. Let's hop over to the learn guide, learn.83.com. That's where you're going to find all the awesome learn guides. Overview walks through all the parts that you need to build this project. It is similar to last week's project. Where we're using a PowerBoost 1000C to make a power portable Pi portal. Sorry, and you get the you same can... battery too. Yeah, there's the parts you're gonna need for that with the assortment of all the uh, different side screws that you can pick up and you can see the GIFs there for how the inside compression spring is activating the switch. You scroll up a little bit, you can see the little GIF animations of that in action. To run over to the circuit diagram, you can see how these are all connected. Uh, what do you mean circuit diagram? Oh, you want me to go there? <clears throat> oh, well, this is all the parts that you need to build the project. Let's run through that. There are some uh, additional parts that you can use. Guess what? The mini over speaker is something that you could totally have. Maybe when uh, you have a certain image, you can play back some different audio. That there plugs right into the little uh, Pico connector that's on 
the back of the Pi portal, so you don't need to solder uh, a separate speaker. It already comes with that connector, which is really nice. So it's a little add-on there if you want to go beyond what's in the project. Okay, we'll talk about this nylon, conductive nylon fabric tape in just a minute, but let's look at the circuit diagram. So we're using connection here. The only thing that you'll be needing to solder is the power boost 1000C there. We're going to directly solder the uh, enable and ground pin so we can have our switch, our on and off switch for the power boost, which will turn on the Pi portal, which will be connected through one of these stemma connections there. And then the other one will be for the button using the 2000 milliamp hour battery to power the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And we have some notes on <laughs> doing the connections for the stem up uh, connect uh, JST cable, which is like a three pin uh, JST connection. Yeah, which makes it really easy to connect into the pipe portal. You can just connect it easily. I love it. Anything else for the circuit diagram? We got nice text for you as well. Mm -hmm. So little exclamation, also how long you're gonna need each wire to be. Very yeah. handy for routing these around. Definitely recommend using the silicone coated wire so you can more easily uh, bend these around yeah. the components so they're not obstructing the view when you mount these. Yeah, less likely to melt too. That's true, yes. All right, heading on over to the code. I can explain this a little bit. Shout out to Lamar Free, Lady Ada for writing the code for this. How awesome. And a huge shout out to Mike B for doing some pie linting work on this. So this is, I guess, where we get to kind of show off the new website. So this is a download link for getting CircuitPython on your Pi portal. Chances are, if you're getting it, we've got a new version of CircuitPython for you. So when I right click and edit in a new, open in a new tab, we will see we have a lovely new website. Yes, so this is a nice uh, website called circuitpython.org. And it is a way to get the latest versions of CircuitPython for your hardware. In this case, this is the download page for the Pi Portal. Over here, you can see this is the latest uh, beta version of CircuitPython, version 4.0. You can download the UF2 file right here. And we have a nice little drop down for all the different languages that are supported. This is driven by the community. Huge shout out to you folks that are contributing in different uh, languages. If you want the absolute newest one, we have a little button here for um, taking a look at the, uh, the stuff on Amazon S3 servers and past releases. You can check it out on our GitHub here. If you click on the kind of downloads page, this is awesome. So this shows you visually all of the different um, boards uh, that, that support CircuitPython. We're gonna talk about more in the shop, you know, the shop talk segment, but for now, um, this is this is awesome. <laughs> Huge shout out to team for for, uh, for working on this. So Pi Portal, download the latest UF2. Excellent. Installing the libraries is as simple as downloading our, our bundle from GitHub and then adding it to your Circuit Pi drive. Once you plug in that Pi Portal into your USB um, port, you will get um, a nice drive called Circuit Pi Drive where you can put all your libraries and your code. Here's a list of all the required. Uh, libraries for running this uh, this demo code here, the, the slideshow. So it's using the Pi Portal, the slideshow, image loader, and the SD card, and of course the device, the bus device library. So those are the main libraries that you want to make sure you have in your circuit Pi drive before running the code. A quick note on images, we have uh, two options. You can either store your images on the internal spy flash. Um, you just need to make sure there's an image folder or if you'd like to have your images on an SD card, your SD card should be FAT32 formatted and it should also contain a folder named images. Okay, so far so good. How about the image names? Well, the code looks for any image, so it can be named arbitrarily, um, but you might want to avoid some special characters like, siphon, like hyphens and dashes and that sort of stuff, so just keep your title pretty simple. Now, as far as the images, they should be uh, a certain size. They should be 320 by 240 pixels. You can use open source software to scale your images. And it should be at least a 24 bit color bitmaps. You should be able to do 16 bit color in the new version of CircuitPython, but for now I have them set to 24 bit. And they should be, of course, bitmap formatted. If that sounds a little bit too complicated, well, we have a sample image pack that you can download as a zip file and then throw those onto your CircuitPy drive, the images folder, of course. 
Uh, they're just some little images that we have of projects in Adabot. So those are kind of fun, so check those out. It's a really quick way to get going so you don't have to create your own images. Mm -hmm. Here is the code. We're going to quickly kind of rush through it, but uh, here you can change uh, the folder name if you want to have a different folder name. This is where the switch is tied to. You want to pay attention to the D3 number. If you are following the photos in this learn guide, we're actually using D4. That's a super simple thing to change in the code, so just change that to a 4 or a 3, depending on how you want to have it. Okay, scrolling back down here, you can see that the SD card is, uh, is also looking for the images right here. And then you can see down here is where the actual uh, while loop, the loop is happening. You have some options here uh, to change the, uh, the playback order is indeed alphabetical. You can adjust that. You can also uh, change it if you want it to loop or not. So there you go. You have some options to play around with. Uh, but check it out if you'd like to contribute, add more to it, fork it. You can totally do so. You can view the project um, code here on our GitHub. So use these links here if you'd like to do so. But that, in a nutshell, is how the code works, where you can uh, grab it and feel free to modify it. Please do. And if you do, let us know. So that's the code. Pretty simple um, way to create a slideshow for your Pi Portal. One of the most frequently asked questions is, can you load a image side by side? Well, yes, you're going to have to create it. So that means you could create anything you want. Oh, that's right. You could be... just bake it into the image if mm -hmm. you'd like. You can bake it into the image. You can you even do way. the green and blue laid on top image. So you blue. have yeah. red and blue. So you uh -huh. have the parallax effect going That'd on. Awesome. Add some filters on the, the outside here. If uh, you have to create your own images, you can make anything you want for these. Excellent. Let's head on over to the 3D printing page. Pedro, you can talk about it. Yeah, so what is it? Two, four, six, seven different components or parts to assemble this together. Mostly because I didn't want to use any support materials, although you are going to need just a little bit of support for the slide switch holder there. You can get access to the Fusion 360 files, of course, the um, step files, as well as just STLs off That's of right. Thingiverse. You can download those and modify those if you want to make those a little bit slimmer. If you don't need to use the, sl the, uh, the speaker for that, you can utilize that for more battery compartments or anything else you want to store inside there. Slice settings are a little bit, uh, scroll a little bit down there. You can see it's just typical settings, the default settings actually for the Cura version of the uh, Ultimaker slicer for that. Uh, just two millimeter layer height for uh, point 0.4 millimeter nozzle for that, so nothing crazy there. I'm using just the default line width of uh, 3.5. We usually like to change to 3.8. Uh, mm. That should work as well since there's not crazy uh, uh, tolerant things that need to be you know, super tolerant for that. Uh, the supports, like I mentioned, for the slide switch, and I have a little GIF there to show how I utilize Cura's support blockers mm. to only add the supports where I needed them to. So I just blocked the four standoffs for the uh, PowerBoost 1000C. You can see there, I'm just blocking any supports being built there. I did try the plugin that you can get for Cura. It's called, uh, I think, like custom supports. Oh yeah. But for whatever reason, fun. the way it's coded or something, it's a little buggy and it didn't want to obey where I wanted my supports to be placed. Uh, it would be, you can definitely use uh, Simplify 3D for this if you really wanted to. Um, nice little hack around there for using Cura is just tell it where you don't want the supports to be. And it did an excellent job Sweet. of adding a very thin amount of supports to the roof if you have your, uh, your uh, yeah, if you want to just like circle where around, around mm -hmm. where the roof of the slide switch little holder cool. for that is. Yeah, and this is for the uh, sort of the main enclosure called uh, Ada Frame Head part. Phase. No, it's a different name, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's Kira Keeps. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, name I get it. It's, it. The, it's the previous name. Excellent. And then for right. support removal, you can see that I'm just using tweezers to uh, fit between the little zigzag pattern that it creates for that to rip that off. I did lower the support density to about 10% in the uh, interface layer. I think I uh, moved it up to like 0.25, just so there's a little bit more separation between the geometry and the support material for that, so it doesn't fuse together. Sweet, good tips. Okay, heading on over to the assembly of this. You want to start off with the crank assembly. Yeah, and one of the first things to assemble is these two pieces, the crank 
part and the crank holder. It's gonna lay on top of each other and it has uh, like this rail that it will rotate around. And then these little hooks that these compression springs will hook up into. The springs that I used were just common ones that you could get at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's the uh, 5 fifteenths by one and a half inches. And I just chopped, down, chopped that down to about 20 millimeters. And I'm combining imperial and <laughs> metric sizes there. Oh, Sorry fine. about that. Uh, so I just cut that. And then one of the ends, you want to bend them uh, like a flat sort of shape that I show in the image of that you can reference. And then you actually want to, to loop that through the hook that is attached right next to the pillar on the crank part. From there, you are going to want to thread it into the crank holder little hoop. Now that's gonna act as the hoop to hold our spring and as an end stop, so you can't rotate it past that mm. point. And you can see a little gif there of me. Uh, once it's already attached, that's the, the spring, the back that you want to yeah, have on it. The intended motion that mm -hmm. we're getting. Sweet. Yeah, there are little uh, geometries in place to keep that guarded and in place. Yeah. So the pivot's right in the center there with that opening and that post. Excellent. Yeah, this was, would you say this was the hardest mechanism to... Just getting the tolerances getting that, and right. sizes yeah, uh, okay. to conform to the shape that we want to in, in terms of the, the pie portal size. Yeah, I like this. Um, I think conceptually for designs that need to have this super interesting movement, Mm -hmm. uh, this is a great method to do it. Yeah. Um, very clever. Good job. Uh, scrolling down, you can see the different layers that will combine the eyepiece to the crank. There's going to be just a small little sliver of a part there. And that's only because I didn't want to use support materials, material for that on any of the other pieces. It would just, it's not required if you can just chop off that part. And that's only because it, uh, if you jump over the overhead, sure, give me a minute. you can see why that it's is. Be... All it's doing is providing some support to the top part of the crank here. Yeah, if that so was one unified right body, you would have quite a bit of an opening. That's way too much that's, support. That's if not, you yeah. put it on the eyepiece or yeah. this part over here. So it's just for that one little opening part right there. Uh, it also adds a little bit of flair uh, as a sort of an accent strip. I think oh, I yeah, kind of yeah. like it. Yeah, if you have a different color sweet. like we did there. Yeah. All right, moving on. Okay, let's go back to the website. It's going to be C. Yeah. All so right. we'll show you how to combine all those layers together. And we're using the M3 uh, 60 millimeter long screw because it is going to have to go through uh, those three layers and then into the frame part. Right. Okay. Building out the switch for the crank, instead of using the conductive copper tape, we're using our nylon uh, oh. conductive tape. This is a little bit more forgiving as it gives you more of a, I, I say more stickiness to it when attaching to a shiny, flat, 3D printed part. That definitely helped it, it, out I there. I think it's more durable as well. It's definitely it's more durable. You're able to bend it because you, you are going to have to uh, sort of bend that onto the the side of the crank there. Yeah, you can see it kind of twists a little bit there. Yeah, so we wrap it around the jumper cable end of the three pin uh, JST, mm -hmm. and then we attach that to the crank, and then the crank holder over there by the uh, the spring. And when those are rotated, they will meet, touch to make contact. Excellent. So let's see that in motion here. There's a nice little GIF. Open it in a new tab. Here we yeah, are. You can see where the switches make contact Click. there. Click. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Nice GIF. All right, let's head on back over. Now we're going to assemble our power boost. Yeah, so we'll set that assembly over to the side and start soldering together our power boost 1000C. As I mentioned in the circuit diagram, we're going to uh, remove the uh, JST connector for the data so we can mm -hmm. easily identify which is which and then solder the negative to the black, positive to the red on the power boost end there where the USB would usually be. So mm -hmm. you don't have to solder on the USB connection for that. 
-hmm. And the ground and enable pin are gonna go into one of each of the uh, pins on the slide switch. You can definitely cut off that third leg there since mm -hmm. we're not gonna be needing that. Yep. I'm gonna mount it. After that, oh, and I have the uh, sizes that you're gonna need for the slide switch there. It's about okay. 110 millimeters long, which will give it ample room to go across the uh, frame part without obstructing your view mm -hmm. underneath the battery and then over to its little mounting spot that we have on the frame. Cool. I'm gonna mount this with the USB port facing the outside of the frame because that is where the little ports for that's gonna be so you can have easy access to that. And then we're using the M2, uh, M2.5 by five millimeter long screws. Those are secured into the standoffs there. Uh, the ones in the back, you are gonna have to just angle it a little bit, but those should go in pretty well with the, uh, uh, the what is the sonic screwdriver that we have in the shop. Yeah. Make this a lot the easier screw. without having to sit there and you know, turn each screw. Okay, let's mount our switch. Jumping over to, move to mounting our switch after we've fully removed all the support material on there. You want check and make sure otherwise it's not going to uh, fit into place. Uh, you want to first turn the slide switch uh, lever to like the middle part so you can easily push that through into the port opening. Uh, have it angled with the little slide switch first and then push down on the uh, back part as you can kind of see there in the uh, image. Okay. Mm. Optionally from here you can add the uh, oval mon uh, speaker if you'd wish to add sound effects to your slideshow. I cool. uh, want to position the wire so it is pointing down closest to the slide switch just yes. so it, it's not going up and around uh, the frame since the wire isn't that long. Mm. You might need to You may need it. an extender for yeah. that. Okay, we'll see. I just added it on there just so you mm -hmm. can have the geometry ready for upgrades. Yeah, it's a great way to add it. It's just a little cavity. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a little sticker port on the front oh, yeah. that so you can will put it where we it. want. Uh, it should go. have pretty good tolerances, but that that sticker will give that extra hold that yeah. you may need. I like that sticker. I wish more things had it. <laughs> I wish the slide switch had a sticker thing. That'd be nice. Moving on to adding the lid portion of this, we're going to use the M3 by five millimeter screws to secure it onto the frame, and then there are slot openings to to thread our uh, power uh, JST through there. Let's see how that looks like there. Yeah, just roll over it, you can see it, how it's tucked in between that little opening and slides through the little slot. Yeah. Moving on to mounting the LiPo. LiPo. LiPo battery. Yes. Uh, we're using the 2000 milliamp hour LiPo battery for this, and we're just using a piece of foam tape to secure it. Uh, it does a pretty good job yeah. of uh, holding that on. The Mounting tack is another option. Yeah, you can do, definitely do that as well. I didn't want to add like a little 3D printed Me part neither. on there because just, you don't want to smush it in there. And, like, that and uh, in. you want to be able to have options for different batteries. Maybe folks want to use yeah. a different battery. Mm -hmm. There you go. And it's actually pretty easy to remove if you have one of the um, one of these guys here, which we always this? use for removing prints the plastic portion of this, the way that it bends in, yeah. it has that flat part. Bit of a spatula slash pallet knife. Wedge it in there and it is able to remove it without damaging the soft wrapping around that battery. Cool. Uh, you wanna position it uh, close to the slide switch, uh, but like closer to the opposite end of that so the little posts don't touch the battery. Mm, okay. Because you do have a little bit of clearance uh, for that. Okay, and then now we're gonna attach the pipe portal. Oh, you also wanna orient the wires coming out of the battery where it's closest to the power boost so you can easily hook that up. I just used a tweezer to uh, route that JST port to connect it into the power boost. Uh, once you connect it, if it turns on, you can turn, make sure to turn it off just so you don't have power running on that. Okay, now Moving we're ready on to, to <laughs> attach the actual pipe portal here. Uh, it's gonna be the M3 uh, by 10 millimeter long uh, uh, screws. Uh, so first we're gonna lay the Pi portal on top of that, and then our 3D printed cover piece will go on top of that. 
you don't actually need the cover. It's just to you know, provide a little bit of pr uh, protection for that. Uh, so you could uh, you know, skip this part if you don't need that. But again, you do have access to all the ports and the mm -hmm. reset button program port there. Now, this is a cool need. way if you want to attach other components or decorate That's it true, or, yeah. or, or put a face with googly eyes on it. Mm -hmm. That's the way to it. Yeah. You can totally change that. You can change up uh, any of the openings as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're going to put it all together. Yep, so we're going to align our crank assembly. We're going to line it up so that the crank is on the right side. Um, mm. I guess if you were left-handed and wanted it on the left, you could go inside of oh, nah. Fusion and mirror it that. somehow. Nah. But you just want to make sure that the, the crank is on the left, which is uh, closest to the power boost, just the way that the alignment is for this one. And you want to push through the slide switch uh, buttons through that same slot on the side of where the power one is already going through. And I can kind of see in that image there the way that I'm routing the cable so they don't interfere with your view yeah. and the screen. It's actually going underneath the LiPo battery there and it holds on as you line it up and attach your M, I forgot what it was, did I list it there? Your M3, M3 I think it's like five millimeter long. Mm -hmm. uh, oh no, it's already attached. Uh, it should be already attached to the eyepiece okay. crank assembly. It's the 16 millimeter long. Oh, I see what you're saying. It's not threaded all the way through, and then once it's attached, then you can thread it all the way through. Yeah. But you do want to do what this one here. So you're testing it before you're closing it. Yes, you do want to test that first. Yeah, Make sure that, that you that the crank, uh, A, doesn't get stuck, and B, yes. that, that it's actually making contact with the other uh, pin. You can see that there, just me testing that out. I did actually have to move the the conductive uh, nylon tape just a little bit closer to where that hoop is so it doesn't get stuck. Yeah. And at this point in the assembly, you should have already tested the tolerances yeah. to make sure you're, you yeah, need this, any light At this sanding. point, you're just testing you can the, do the tape uh, position of the tape. Right. Okay, cool. so once that's all good, you got your, your slide switch activated, nothing sticking. You can go ahead and uh, Close it up. finish closing it up. Screw the, uh, the M. Three. M3, 16 millimeter long, screws together. And then like we showed here, you can plug in both of the power and the uh, slide switch if you haven't already. Right. No. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, add your googly eyes and you <laughs> have yourself a digital viewfinder. Yeah, kids love it. Yeah, you should this love too. It, yeah. Definitely when you have your own photos. So does the grandparents, there. they love it too. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, but Overhead. Yes. What I really like is just how fast this thing boots up. Uh, if we had made this with, you know, a Pi or something else, it you know takes forever to get that boot yeah. going. But Let me I load just I just flipped it on, yeah. right? Already. And it's done. Yeah. Shout That's out it. to the team for making a That's image it. Buff <laughs> buffer quicker. That's so fast. Yeah, like I quick. can't believe how. This is awesome. Yeah. So, how so awesome you could this again, is. you could expand on this, guys. You can add sound effects so that every time it clicks, you can yeah. actually get a click sound or mm -hmm. a, a custom sound for different images. Maybe you make it into a game, right? Maybe you oh, uh, randomize yeah. it or something. Maybe it's a coin slot game. You could utilize we want you guys the to start extra. thinking creatively with this. So yeah, we're this definitely gonna use this base as something you know something else. Like I was saying before, you can add a chord toy down there have like a virtual Game Boy yeah. type of project. Yeah, I like that people. on this realm with the designers, you can kind of come up with different things as a platform. For programmers, having that slideshow code in place mm -hmm. with the library and working code is super important and really nice um, that people can leverage all, that, all the work done there. Mm -hmm. So it's great. Uh, what else? I was going to say about this. Oh, damn. I had Pi Portal is, let's go ahead and check to see if it's in stock, shall we? While you guys do that, you can chat, chat it up. I'm going to clean up my tabs here because I have a hundred of them open. And we're going to go here. You guys are in luck. 13 are in stock right now. So if you have not gotten a Pi Portal yet, I highly encourage you and suggest that you do. And if you do, you can use coupon code Portal view, get 10% off that. If you'd rather win, oh, you'd for rather free, win, right? A Pi Portal, you can win one. Have a contest going on with the lovely folks at Microchip. That's right, Microchip. They are having a contest right now. 
um, every day. Actually, right after this show at 12 uh, p.m. Eastern Time, they are going to live stream and they're going to give away a pipe portal and some other awesome uh, prizes. This is uh, yesterday's live stream. Um, uh, the Adafruit team was actually in the chat room, hanging out and chatting with folks. And uh, huge shout out to the, to the microchip team for uh, for doing a live stream and doing this together. It's not easy to do this, and uh, we really appreciate other folks for trying it out. So, if you haven't already, and you want to catch up with yesterday's stream, you can do so. But there's going to be one after the show, so that's awesome. Spoiler of very own, Mr. Certainly, who hangs out in Discord chat, won one yesterday. He won it yesterday. It's so cool. better, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So we have links in the description of this video um, to uh, to their YouTube channel, and they also have this uh, this sort of website here to register if you want to officially win all the prizes. He posted in the thing. chat. Yeah, give me a second. So people can have a chance to hit up over there right after pop it our in show. Facebook first. There's that. And then YouTube is right here. Contest? What? I know, right? Yes. So there's that. And then the actual YouTube uh, video is going to be right here. This is going to show you all the live streams that are scheduled and available right now. So check that out. Links are also in the description of this YouTube video. And I'm I pretty just posted sure it on a... Facebook, so it'll be saved there on the replay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a blog post and all that. There's also a blog post on the Adafruit Check site. the Twitter as well, so yeah. you can see We're... any other <laughs> behind the scenes stuff. Uh, we're trying to promote it as much as we can, yeah. Excellent. All right. Pi portal. Thank Pi you, portal. folks. All right. I know, it's such a cool... As soon as the, the code started working, we were like, oh my god. It instantly awful. felt so good because like all the mechanics were figured out and then it's just, it mm -hmm. felt really, uh, what would you call it? Good? <laughs> no. Yeah. It felt right. It felt like this is, this is great. The effect and everything just kind of hit you at once. Yeah. It's really cool. And definitely post up if you do any modifications. This should be super simple. The way it was designed, you can literally just grab the edges for this and everything else will get updated with it. That's when cool. I'm still playing with the size. Originally, yeah. I wanted to have it. I think I have the... Uh, it's over... Yeah, there it is. Yeah. This one. Where's the other Let's little one? Let's look at it side by side with a real... Oh, it's definitely uh, bigger. <laughs> what's that real other one? Viewmaster. So this is the current modern day Viewmaster that you can pick up at your local big box store or yeah. Amazon. So I don't want to get in trouble with any, you know, IP with like they're working on a movie for a few. I don't know how We've that's going to work. We don't know how that's going to yeah. work, but uh, but maybe you could it's definitely like Jumanji. It's like a Jumanji could, movie. They get sucked into the maybe. to the pictures. And, yeah, so you could definitely add like this characteristic <laughs> here. There is plenty of room to actually lop off uh, more geometry to make it more slim. Like I was saying, you can uh, shrink down the yeah. um, the frame for this and make it a little bit more. Thinner. Maybe these could actually do something like color the image or something silly like that. Oh, like it's yeah. just like a gel film or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, there's tons of really cool uh, different ways you can yep. swing this. And there's even room up on this uh, wall on the inside so you can add any other components. That's right. Pretty cool. So you could also utilize some of the sensors that are built into the pipe portal. Yeah, yeah. You want to move into that? That's time. That's uh, that's later. Oh, let me, let me show right. this stuff off. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're going to go. What are you looking for? Yeah, well, whatever is uh, next yeah. on the list for yeah. jumping into prototyping. That's right. Yeah, so we prototyping with uh, some some fun new products. This is a little stand for the e ink display for our feather wings. So let's take a look at it now. So the little stand is three D printed, and uh, it uses these standoffs to secure the e ink display. The e ink display we have. Uh, a couple of them right now in the shop. This is the 2.13 inch display for the feather wing. Uh, what makes this one super special is that, well, it's easy to add a PCB like our feather wing here. Right here, this is the ESP32. So we can get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth all right here. It's really easy to, uh, to take it out. As you can see here, we have an SD card, reset button, the, the 12 and the 16 uh, header pins that are short profile. And there's also a lovely SRAM chip here for doing some nice buffering and things. So that is awesome. Um, this is such a gorgeous display as it's super crystal clear. I'm gonna go ahead and try to um, change our focus so it's a little bit more on the clarity side, yeah? There we go. 
So the benefit of e-ink is that uh, it works without any power. It'll stay on for, for a few days and things, or maybe a few weeks. I'm not sure how long it'll stay up, but it's there for now. Um, the downside is that it, can only, it shouldn't be refreshed more than 180 seconds. That's three minutes. Uh, so we might want to change this guy here where this is a clock. So this little UI here is uh, something I'm playing with. It's not actually uh, real data right now. I'm just kind of playing with the graphic. We have CircuitPython code and Arduino code uh, to load a bitmap image and turn it into this, uh, this e-ink stuff uh, using the SD card here. So I'm using the SD card. It's a bitmap in there. And the Arduino code uh, parses it and makes it into this lovely uh, e-ink stuff. So you have three colors to choose with, white, red, and black. Um, uh, I'm going with a little bit of a weather station here. We have uh, the temperature, uh, a little icon. You can have so much fun with three different colors. You can see you got red going on in that sun there. It's a really clean, clean uh, icon. Uh, this right here would be, maybe it's pulling in some calendar events uh, from your Google Calendar, for example. So I have two events here. Hey, today, that's today. Is it the right time? That's a little late. <laughs> it is Wednesday, March 13th, so you can play with that and different cups and fonts and things. The team is working on uh, uh, making uh, Circuit Python libraries uh, to make it work on our e-ink displays. You can check out the demo code now. And uh, this is, I just did a pull request on this uh, stand so you guys can 3D print it. It's actually 3D printed like this, <laughs> like this, <laughs> before I tipped it over. So it prints on the Z like that with, uh, without any supports. If you are uh, printing without any supports, you want to uh, be aware of this overhang here, a little bit of a nasty overhang there, but uh, um, you can sand that away or whatnot. But I have enough clearance here so that the, uh, the PCB can fit okay. Let's see if I can line up those headers and just press it down. And it's there a good it tip too to expand with how much you know it's actually going to sag down to yeah. uh, have enough clearance. Exactly. You don't even need to cut that bit off. Yeah, another uh, design consideration was the USB ports. They're always a problem. Always so I good. have this bit of a shift here. You can see that the stand is going down. It comes at an angle, comes straight down, and then at an angle again, just to give you more clearance for those, in, those really large USB cables. You know who you are, USB cables. Um, so this, this design here is very similar to uh, the Pi Zero stand and the Pi Portal stand. It doesn't tip over, it's not front tip at all. And uh, I also added this little spline curve here, just to give it some, uh, some, some aesthetics to it. But uh, if you would like to download it now, I did do a pull request, and um, this will probably be next week's project. Just the stand, uh, we are, our team is working on getting a weather station code for the for the e ink displays. So if you'd like to pick up an e ink display, let's take a look at it on the uh, on the website. I might have access to it right here. It is again the 2.13. Let's see if we have them in stock. I want to say we do. Please say we do. I think we do. Let's take a look at the product page. So it's product ID 4128, and we have six in stock. Excellent. Well, if you'd like to get one now, please do. Use coupon code PORTALVIEW and you'll get 10% off that, off your whole order, which is awesome. So there it is. Arduino code and everything is, is uh, in this learn guide here. We have several different breakouts, so you can see all the different ones here in the, in the right side panel. You can see all the different ones we have, including the feather wing that we just showed off. If you'd like to create a custom design for the e-ink display, I have a, uh, a CAD file, a CAD model rendering of the components, the PCB. It also includes uh, silk screens and stuff, which is pretty nice. Um, so you can get a really good idea of uh, clearances and things in, um, for your design. Definitely a good GitHub to star since all of the model code and uh, a couple of the assets are actually uploaded there a week or two before projects are actually released. So definitely make sure to check that out. Start, check it weekly. Yeah. There's Please always do stuff added. Go ahead and star this GitHub repo, Adafruit CAD parts. I'm going to post that link right now in all the different chats. So I've been posting it throughout them. the show, but it doesn't Excellent. hurt to post it one more time. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so, so um, you can um, 
pull them all down, do a fork, uh, press uh, pull requests, and all that good stuff as well. So thanks to any contributors and folks. We also have some other stuff bleeding into Shop Talk. We have some more CAD stuff. I went ahead and updated our Feather M4 Express uh, 3D model. I've been using this in so many different projects, I really wanted to get that silkscreen updated. So I am working on a layer by layer on how to uh, properly uh, layer elements in Eagle CAD to get all your silkscreen graphics to show up when you import it and export it as a Fusion 3D file. On that note, we also did the ESP32. So this is the Huzzah ESP32 Feather. Um, it has all the components that, uh, that are on the board and it features that lovely silk screen. So you can get a real one-to-one -one, um, scale on this, on this board. And this one's a CAD explosion of the, of the stand and the, just to kind of show the assembly of how the hardware is. This is a lot of fun putting together. I love making these, it's so fun. Um, so you can check that out. We also have a layer by layer on how to create these type of animations in Fusion 360. So be sure to check out the playlists that are linked down in the description. Excellent. CAD files for days. <laughs> so, so there you go. Check out all the CAD files that we have for you folks. And if you'd like to request one, you can use the Issues tab in our GitHub repo to, to, um, to request parts. Mm -hmm. Yep. Definitely consider them. Still on the subject of what are we prototyping, jumping back over to the Pi Portal. Last week they talked about making a little Pi Top with it, a little laptop sort of looking, uh, you say theme or. Bit of a mini port. terminal, right? Yeah, so, mini terminal for uh, that. You, could, uh, you can connect this to your computer mm -hmm. and then um, you can use some, some software to, to make it. Pretty much like mirror the display mirror the of display, what uh, Moo yeah. is seeing. So there have been some sneak peek videos on PT uh, showing that off. So I want to take a step further and actually turn into a portable little uh, keyboard. Can you take that apart? Because that. that looks too much like it's built into the design. Oh, so yeah. it, it, so get it is out. 3D printed, the little kind of holder there. Yeah, and it, that wow, out. it's got it's a nice click. Mm -hmm. So the so, idea is the tray will uh, act as a hinge for the Pi portal. So you can have this built in all-in-one device where it houses the keyboard and the Pi portal. So this is step one, right? To get your clearances working for that bottom thing. This keyboard is something we stock. It is called the Mini Bluetooth Keyboard. I'm gonna pull it up on the website. It's PID 3601. It's only 12 bucks. It's like the smallest keyboard. It is the we smallest have, keyboard that we have. With still having all the buttons uh, or keys that you would need for that. So yeah. like you were saying before, utilizing the same hinge design that I used on the Star Trek communicator. So we're just using the 1.75 millimeter filament to act as like the little bar that'll hold everything together. That slips through like that. And what I'm working on now is just the Pi portal part for that sense. It's pretty close to the same dimensions as the screen. So I'll go in something like that. This is obviously not the geometry for that. Just finished that this morning. And I love the design of being able to have a fully 3D printed hinge, the use of the filament that's actually used on there. I had to get the dog. Yeah, somebody was asking, was asking, where's Rufio? Hey, yeah. Ruf, over here. Oh boy, funny story. Like 10 minutes before the show, we were working hard to get our, deg, our dog Say camera. Hi. Hi. And uh, we I were guess. unsuccessful to get our dog camera. We'll try to get up for the but show. We're going to try next week. Yeah. But, so, yep, uh, that's what we're working on here. A nice little pie portal terminal. Very cool. Access to all the ports and all that good stuff on the back. Very cool. We'll so be seeing suitable. more of this keyboard, yeah? Okay. Yep, definitely follow Adafruit Twitter for uh, some of the behind the scenes of our work progress for that. Awesome. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's Community Makes. Yes, Community Makes this week. Big shout out to Bill Binko of AT Makers. Let's run our time-lapse Tuesday video. Every Tuesday we do a video uh, where we uh, find some cool designs from the community and we 3D print them and do a little video about it. So this is again from Bill Binko. He wanted to make a kind of a, a stream deck enclosure for his Pi portal. So he came up with this design. He put his name on it as well, his website on there. And uh, this was 3D printed under Purusha using OctoPrint. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did a couple of, of modif just one modification actually to it, which was just expanding the USB ports. You can 
hook that up. I'm definitely going to take this further and add uh, standoffs for the uh, Power Boost 1000C and the 22 milliamp hour cylindrical battery that's actually on the inside. Yeah. All right, we're going to go into the overhead now. And uh, as well as a proper hole for the uh, slide switch on there. Since yeah. he did intend this to be, I guess, hooked up to a computer, it's okay. It's okay. he didn't have, uh, this wasn't optimized for making it portable, which is why he released it so people can add that functionality to it. But as uh, he was saying, I don't think he went on the show and tell yet to show it off, so here we are. Uh, no, he did. Did he? I think he said it was a parametric angle, so you can actually adjust the angle of this in the uh, side of Fusion. And this is using your snap uh, design for the uh, yes. the lid part there. And you can kind of see the 22 milliamp. Yeah, it all fits in there. Battery plenty on there. room in the wedge. <laughs> and then the uh, power boost is just, uh, I, think it, I think it was like foam tape that I put on there. Yeah. So this is definitely a, a very nice way to have like a button control or, or a stream deck. Mm -hmm. um, he did post, I think, like a grid layout. So if you want to have right. buttons Let's... on there. Yeah, I'll pull them up right now. Go ahead and jump onto the Thingiverse page for Bill's super awesome design. Oh, my laptop just died. Really? Yeah. Did you not charge it? <laughs> the battery is... No good. The capacity is not good anymore. No bueno. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a look at the Thingiverse page. Bill Binko's playing around with the, uh, the touch control UI stuff. So here's a good look at that. And if you look over to the things file, you can see that, yep, he has added the grid topper. It's just this swappable um, drop and replacement for the regular top. So you have options here. Awesome, Bill, thank you. He also added the Fusion uh, 3Z file so that you can modify all of the original uh, sketches and whatnot. So there you go. Super cool. Thank you, Bill, for sharing that with us. Continuing on to Community Makes, we have some things here from the community. I'm going to try to pull these up as quick as I can. This one isn't a, a make of one of the previous projects, but a, a new project that kind of caught my attention. This is on Thingiverse. It's called Mickey's Magic Wand. It uses the Gemma M0, and uh, I think it's a 16 NeoPixel ring to make this really cool kind of magic wand. So you can see here, it's, the effect looks amazing. Looks like a real magic happening there. So this little kind of Mickey magic wand. Um, yeah, awesome. Very cool. Shout out to uh, uh, the Meyer on, on Thingiverse for sharing that with us. Here is a make of the Flexi Raptor. This one came in this week as well. Nice print in place demo print to calibrate your printer if you're trying to get different uh, colors with your dual extrusion stuff. It's awesome there. Thank you for me, Lulu, for posting that. And we're making the rounds here. Here's another one. This is a themed one. Do you remember the bracelets that we did, the gauntlets? This is Captain Marvel's NeoPixel bracelets. Uh, so this, uh, this user here, um, was making it like for the, the premiere of wow. the Captain Marvel and they were able to do it. Um, not screen accurate, but it does look amazing. So here's a remix of the cuffs that we did a couple months, years ago, I can't remember. The NeoPixel it bracelet, that, I think you worked on that one, yeah. So nice cool theme on that. Awesome. Remember these? We did oh, some yeah, fun yeah, light yeah. painting. So you can totally theme out these things and that's what that's we so like cool. to see. Very cool, uses magnets. How do they work? <laughs> All right, Raspberry Pi A Plus case. This is a nice make. If you get yourself a Pi uh, A Plus and you want a quick case for it, we got one that you can use zip ties uh, to, to secure it down to what looks like a 3D printer. Yeah. And I think the last one is going to be a Pi Zero camera. So this is a little case, nice. all in one kind of device for making a Pi Zero camera. So if you'd like to check that one out, that is also available on uh, our Learn Guide and on Thingiverse and beyond. So thanks to Mike Err for posting that of his make. It looks good in purple. If you, guys if you guys like to share your projects with us, please do so. Why not come on tonight? Live stream um, happens tonight at 7.30 p.m. That's, uh, ask, that's show and tell. This is where we invite folks from the community, the world, uh, to come share their projects with us. So we'd love to see you there. That's tonight at 7.30 p.m. 
will be there. You can uh, win a Seeing a Show and Tell sticker, and if you have a really cool project that has That's to right. do with one of the projects that we're uh, working on or releasing, that you could have access to beta test. Ooh. Excellent. So definitely stop by for that. Later on in the evening is Ask an Engineer with Lamar, Lady Ada, and Mr. Lady Ada, Phil Theron. It's on every Wednesday at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You get a full hour of Lamar and Phil, open source hardware, Circuit Python on hardware, and much, much more. You also have an opportunity to win some stuff at the end of the yes. show. We do that every week, not just on special days. Mm -hmm. They do that every week, which is awesome. So definitely tune in for that. For more coupon codes. More but until then, we have one right now. Ah. Bye, Portal View. We'll save you 10% off your order. Expires at 11.59 p.m. tonight. Does not work on the gift certificates or subscriptions like Adabox, which if you have not signed up for yet, definitely get on that. We will be out of those very soon. Yes. I think that's going to be it for this week. Yeah. There's Thank this one all. video we haven't played. It's this one right here, the blue one. Oh, yeah. We just want to play that one? Yeah, then we... It's a two minute, eight, yeah. So I guess we'll play this video and uh, we will go silent, right? Or do you want to talk through it a little bit? Uh, no, I think it could be like the, uh, the end video. Okay. Well, I'm going to do a, a quick switch to that. Hopefully that didn't switch. Um, we'll turn that off and turn that on. Well, that's going to be it for the show. We really appreciate you guys coming in on the show with us. Remember, we do the show every Wednesday. Until, until next time, remember to make a great day. See you next week, Enjoy guys. the video, guys. Bye.